Once you've installed and configured your Groove.io nodes for the first time, you're ready to start doing something more substantial with your data. If you don't already have these nodes installed or a localhost device configured, go ahead and watch our previous videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to bring in an analog channel value and then use that to actually write a digital state change. And we'll be doing a basic decision making in the middle, and there's a couple of different ways that we can do that with Node-RED. So we'll take a look at the options, what the pros and cons of each are, and so you can find the best approach for you. When it comes to making decisions in Node-RED, one of the simplest ways to do it is with a switch node. This switch node essentially reroutes the flow of traffic based on some value. So let's double click it and see how this works. Here, you check some property to see if it matches some condition. In this case, we are going to be checking message.payload, and that's going to be a temperature that we're going to be reading in. Then we're going to see if it meets some threshold, let's say if it's greater than a number, right? Number being 85 degrees. So if our incoming temperature is greater than 85 degrees, it's quite warm, and we're going to toggle an output on. That could be something like a fan or a refrigeration unit. But we also need to turn it off when it is less than or equal to 85 degrees. So just come down to the bottom here, and you'll see there's the option to add a new condition. And here I could set it to be less than or equal to, again, 85. But there's another option at the bottom here called otherwise. And that way I don't have to put in any conditions, it's just sort of a catch-all. Anything that's not greater than 85 degrees is going to be coming out of this second output. And you'll see that we have one output on the switch by default, but as soon as I save this change, we'll see that we now have two outputs. One will switch the flow out this way when it's a greater than 85 degrees, and every other message will come out this bottom output. So now we just need to figure out exactly how to configure our input and output groove nodes, and we'll be able to do some basic control here. So I'll come up to Groove Manage, and select my IO channels. Here you can see that my fuel level is on two, but this analog temperature on three is the one I want to read in. And I don't have a fan hooked up to my Groove Rio right now, so I'm just going to simulate it with this blue ring LED. So that's my analog input on three, and my digital output on four, and since I only have the one module for Groove Rio, we all know it's going to be all on module zero. So I'll go back to Node Red and use a little bit of uh, video editing magic to give you an overlay in the bottom right here where we can see our values live, and we'll go ahead and configure these. So our analog input is going to be from localhost. It is an analog channel value, and it's on module zero, and we can see right there it is in fact on channel three. So I'll just put that in and call it something like check temperature. But we don't want to get every single degree of change. That could be a good thing in some cases, but I actually want to get more messages than that. So I'm going to decrease the deadband to 0.5 degrees, which is going to increase the volume of messages I get. So I'm going to get twice as many messages if I had, had set it to an entire degree. Now that in some situations may be too small of a change, and you may want to look at say a 10 degree change and only get updated when it fluctuates by that much. In this case, I'll go with 0.5 degrees and hit done. Now I need to configure my Groove IO write node. So when we check the temperature, we're going to be pushing an output out this way when it's greater than 85 degrees. And so that means we need to write on or turn the fan on. So we'll come in here to our device, select our localhost device. We are toggling a digital output and it is on module zero. And you can see right there, we're gonna be simulating our fan with the blue ring LED. So that would be on index four. But this value, this message.payload at this point in the flow, is just that temperature being redirected through the switch up to this Groove IO write node. So the message.payload in this case is still going to be the temperature. We can't write the temperature to a digital output state. We need to write a specific value like true or false. In this case, we want to turn on the output. And so we'll be sending the value true when it is greater than 85 degrees. So I'll hit done. But now I also need to make sure I turn it off when it's not greater than 85 degrees. To do that, I'll just make a copy of this IO node with control C, paste that with control V, and wire that in. Now I just need to modify this copied node to send the value false to that same module zero, index four, and we'll rename this to be turn off. So with that done, we can see we have a really simple flow here. It will check the temperature every half degree of change, 
and then the switch node will reroute the traffic upwards to turn this uh, output on whenever we are greater than 85 degrees. I can confirm that by hovering over the output port here. And otherwise, we will go ahead and turn it off when it is less than or equal to 85 degrees. So let's see this working. We'll go ahead and deploy. Oh, and just so that we can see everything's working correctly, let's also drag in some debug nodes. We'll drag in one for this top and one for this bottom part of the flow. So every time it gets turned on, we'll see a message, and every time it gets turned off, we'll see a message. So now when I deploy, that initial value will come through, and we'll see, yes, it's 80 degrees, so it's actually quite cool. So if I were to grab the temperature sensor from the Rio and, and start heating it up with my body temperature, we'll see that this is going to start climbing. And every half a degree of change that it goes upwards, we are seeing that dashed outline here around this turn off debug node here. So you can see we're constantly turning it off whenever it's 85 degrees or less. Now you can see we've crossed the threshold, we've turned it on, and you can see the blue LED ring is on there. A simulated fan is running. So we know that this works. So we're just continually turning it on whenever we're above 85 degrees, and then continually turning it back off whenever we're less than 85 degrees. So this all seems to be working. Let's turn these debug nodes off so that we don't keep getting messages here, and clean up our debug pane. So while this works and is really simple, there may be more efficient ways to do this. Because every half degree of change, we are writing this output. And it's simply not necessary. We're saying, oh, you're at 86 degrees, we better turn you on. You're at 87 degrees, we better turn you on. But at that point, it's already being turned on. These are redundant messages. So let's see if we can find a way around this by using another method. To do that, I'll go ahead and disconnect this input node and drag this down so that I don't lose my previous work, but this flow will no longer be running since technically there's nothing being inputted into it. So I'll deploy and we'll take a look at our next node, which is going to be the function node. This is a great node if you have a little bit of experience with programming or if you're not afraid of writing a little bit of code. If I bring open this function node, you can see that I just have this huge text block where I can write whatever JavaScript code I want. In this case, it's going to be relatively straightforward. I'm going to say if the incoming message.payload object, which holds the temperature reading, is greater than 85 degrees, then I want to set message.payload to be equal to true. So even though I'm reading in a number on message.payload, I can change message.payload into anything I want. In this case, I'll want it to be true there, and otherwise, or else, I want message.payload to be equal to false. Now, with that simple change, I can now return the message with this modified payload and hit done. Oh, we'll just go back and give that node a name like write true false. That's a good one. And hit done. So now when we go down and drag in that Groove IO write node and go ahead to configure it, we can see that we can leave this value to be message.payload. Since it now no longer holds a temperature number, it's going to hold a Boolean either true or false. So I'll configure this to be my localhost device. Go ahead and put the module index of zero, the channel index of again down there. We can see that my fan is on output four. And we'll go ahead and write this to be right, true, or false. So here we can see the value I leave as message.payload. So now when I click done, I'll add another debug node. This time I'll hold left control and left click on the screen to quickly add one in really easily with that shortcut. And we can wire this all together. So to review every half, half degree of change in temperature, we'll go here and we'll convert that temperature from the number into a Boolean. We can even rename this to be more appropriate, convert to Boolean. And we'll wire that into the right true or false since it's already been converted. And we'll go ahead over here and we'll watch this message.payload to see the messages coming in. So now when I deploy, we can see instead of seeing a number over here, we're seeing false. The fan is off since it's quite cool. Again, if I were to grab the temperature sensor, we'll see it start heating up. And we're continually writing false because you'll see down there in the bottom right, we're still down at 70 degrees. We're increasing quite quickly and every half degree of change, again, we're confirming off, 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 and we're continually writing false. And so we'll see that continually until we pass the 85 degree mark. Should just take a second longer and then we'll start seeing true show up and we'll see this output get toggled. We let it cool down a little too much, it's taking a moment here, but there you go. It's been toggled on, and if we have a look down here, let's just hide that overlay, there we go. We can see that we are in fact now writing true. 
But again, we have this constant stream of true, 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 whenever it gets written. And we want to be more efficient than that. So we can drop an extra node in here between the conversion and the writing. And the node we'll use is RBE, and that stands for Report by Exception. If we double click this node, we can see exactly what it does right here. This will block value unless it changes. And what that means is it, it'll hear the false message and then pass that along. Then it hears another false and it goes, wait, this isn't new and it won't hand it along. And it won't hand along a false message until something new comes along and changes it. So if we get true, it'll say, hey, this is an exception to the last value and I'll go ahead and hand that along. And this will essentially reduce the repeated values to be only sent out once. So I'll leave this to the default mode of block unless value changes, hit done, and drag this into my wire. You can see it goes dashed and I'm able to drop that right in there. So now when I clear up the debug and hit deploy, we can see that as we're initially deploying the flow, we'll see it's true because we are in fact above 85 degrees. And if we start cooling down the temperature sensor and it drops below 85 degrees, we'll only get one message false. And here it comes as we drop below 85 degrees. The output is going to turn off since we're going to get that one false value, but we're not going to continually get those false values every half degree of change. And that's thanks to this report by exception or RBE node. Now the benefit here is not only having a much quieter debug pane if you leave this debug enabled, it also means you're hitting this node less often, which frees up this application programming interface, this API, to be able to do other things. This can be a really good thing if you have a lot of flows running and you don't want to be constantly hammering your APIs. But we don't necessarily have to use a function node in order to use the RBE node. Let's have a look at what that looks like. We can do that with a change node. So we'll just, again, delete this wire and drag this input down, keep our progress on the previous flow, and go ahead and deploy so that we can start working on this change node. So here, instead of changing message.payload and pushing it down a different route depending on the value or converting the value using some JavaScript code, we're going to be using this change node to change the value a little bit differently. This is going to be a nice compact expression. Here we want to set the message.payload to be that expression. Now you may be tempted to come up here and select change, but you're going to have a little bit of trouble with what you search for since we need to search for all the values above 85 degrees and then search for all the values that aren't above 85 degrees. It's much more straightforward to do a similar thing in the uh, JavaScript that we did and just set the message.payload and redefine it entirely rather than trying to change it individually. So we'll use this JavaScript uh, or JSONADA expression to be able to do this. Now, if you're not familiar with JSONADA, that's okay. If you click these three dots here, we have a really nice testing tab where we can see where everything works. Now, based on a simple Google search, I know that I can make decisions with just a question mark, my first expression, which is going to be true, a colon, and my se second expression, which is going to be false. This is just simple context that we can put some kind of decision here, question that decision, and then give two potential outputs. In this case, if it's true, I want it to set the value to be true, and if it's false, I want it to set the value to be false. Of course, my expression here is, is the message.payload greater than 85 degrees? Here, we can also test it with specific payload values. So here, I'm not expecting a value like, hello world, I'm expecting a number like 82 degrees. And we can see that 82 degrees is not greater than 85, so we'll get returned the value false, and we can see, in fact, our result is false over here. If I get a value like 85, we can see that's not greater than 85. It's equal to it, so we'll again get false. But at 86, there we go. It is greater than 85, and we're getting the expression resulting in the result true. So we know all that works. I can click done, and there we go. We're converting our message.payload to be true or false, depending on this simple expression. Now I can just click done, drag in another RBE node, and we'll also make a copy of this write true false. And again, since we're converting or changing message.payload, the value itself, this message.payload is no longer a temperature number, it is true or false, it's that Boolean. So we can go ahead and keep that as the value here, we're good to go. So I'll again drag in a debug, and then every half degree of change will convert or change the message.payload to be either true or false. 
check to see if it's changed from true to false or back again so that we can get rid of those repeated values, write that value, and then confirm it in the debug pane. So now I'll go ahead and click deploy. We can see that there we go. We got our one value of false. And as we start heating up here, just grab that temperature sensor again. We'll see as the temperature is climbing down here in the bottom right, we'll see it going up, but every half degree, we're not getting a message. Similar to the JavaScript approach, we're only going to get a message when it crosses that threshold. And we actually toggle the output. This is going to be nice and light and low weight on our API, and we'll be able to have uh, an easy way to toggle this output without having to mess around with the code, just using this nice simple change node. So there we go, we're about to cross the threshold, and 84, 85 degrees, and there we go. Our one message has been let through, that one new true message, uh, but no more uh, further messages have come through since we've already toggled it on. We don't need to let it know it needs to be turned on again, and there we go, we're good to go. So here you can see we have three different methods of control. We have the switch node that can redirect traffic and write a constant value of true or false to our digital output. We also have the option to use raw JavaScript code, which you can also use more advanced functions if that's something you're interested in. We'll have some links in the descriptions of some great places to get more familiar with JavaScript. Or you can just use a simple uh, JSONata expression to keep it nice and contained in this change node. Whatever approach you take, you might want to consider using these report by exceptions so that you can block the value unless it changes so that there's a little bit less weight on your writing nodes and that'll free up your API to do other things. As always, once it's actually all working, you can go ahead and disable these debug nodes since you know it's good to go and you can just let it run. Now, whichever one you decide to wire up to is gonna depend on whatever you're most comfortable with and whatever you most have the most experience with. The important thing is, is that you're able to do it in many different ways using Node-RED. They're all supported and they all get the job done.